Hey folks, Scott Fisher here, and you know what time it is. It's time to get another painting. This time we're going to look at my painting, Jaya, Fiery Negotiator for Magic the Gathering's Dominaria United set. Now this is a super sneak peek. They let this one out early, so let's talk about it, man. This is the actual card. It'll look cool in foil with the full bleed. First up, I did some sketches. You guys used to this by now. Tons of sketches, except I did even more. Did I mention I did a ton of sketches? Because I did a ton of thumbnails, but I narrowed those down and picked... Oh, a measly four, five, six, seven of them to uh, work up a little bit further and send to the company. They chose the letter D, which I was pretty thrilled with. So let's do it. So I did a much tighter drawing and this was looking pretty cool. And I thought I was pretty much ready to go. Actually, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I did this drawing first with a color study. A look at the columns. They had a problem with them. They're too iconic, too Greek. That's not magic. They wanted to be cooler. So I did them as Dominaria symbols from the actual expansion Dominaria from that world, which is a pretty cool little Easter egg. Anyway, we're back to our drawing and we got a nice and finalized now and we mounted it onto cradled panel. And you can check that out here in this video if you look at my YouTube. Okay, with the, with the drawing mounted, it's time to start painting. I know there's going to be a ton of fire happening in this piece. So I'm watching right in with these bright oranges and these bright yellows. I am always thinking about gradients. I'm always thinking about values. You can see my color study on the upper right of this screen right now. And that is all I'm pretty much looking at for almost all of this painting at this stage. I'm obeying the color study. So I'm going in and I'm adding all of these textural marks and stuff, but still I needed to knock down the contrast that was happening in there because I didn't want to fight these lines the whole time. So you're seeing me scumble some almost violet it, which is the opposite of the orange to kind of neutralize some of that hot, hot yellow stuff and uh, just ghost things out a little bit and make things a little bit of, uh, of less of a struggle for me later as I'm trying to fight the drawing. I want to be able to see the drawing a little bit. I just don't want it to be too prominent for me. With that end, you know I love to do this part too. I love to cut in my negative space. This is going to be a nighttime shot. I thought that'd be pretty rad. I'm already thinking about that glow that's around her hand there. You can see it, but this is just a massive gradient. Once again, kind of loosely basing it on what happened in the gradients in my color study from earlier. Now it's time to start defining a few things using sort of a brick red color. I'm inking a lot of this and I'm going to go ahead and start scumbling in some of the base middle values for the different elements. Notice I'm kind of shadow welding at that point too where the same value that's on the leg went right into the wall for a second there. After that and after I kind of unify those two areas I start cutting out the bricks a little bit more independently. Once again, just thinking about that gradient, I want those bricks to be lighter up by her legs and get darker as they go down towards the columns. And of course, as a result of that, I'll make that column a little bit lighter so it will pop. But her leg is going to be eventually darker than what is uh, than what's on the columns so that her legs will pop towards the top and around those knees. It's just a lot of noodly noodling, right? Like I have my basic values, my basic structures in the color study, but it's all smooth gradient stuff. The beautiful thing about traditional paint is as you go in, especially with acrylic because it dries so fast, as you go in and try to recreate those gradients, you're going to get a texture. It's just the nature of paint and how fast it dries and how the strokes go down. So you kind of see the base textures that I've thrown down on this thing, but I need to get jiggy with it. Those are drips, man. I just wanted a textural smorgasbord all over this piece, except for uh, the areas where I'm going to be paying a lot uh, closer attention. But as you get away from the details, I could be a little looser. We went ahead and started drawing in some of the bricks and all of the line work that's on the stained glass. And once we do that, we can start establishing those gradients once again. So we're going to just cut in this purple, which goes back to my color study from earlier. Now, it took me a while to arrive at that color study. You know, I don't just hit that instantly. At one point, the whole background was orange in the color study. Eventually, I landed on the purple. I like how that played with the oranges and the yellows pretty well. And so I just decided to run with that. And I also thought because there's so much warmth on the figure herself that having a little bit of purple down there to pop the figure might be good. But look, it's still not enough. You see, I just splashed some orange on top of that purple to neutralize that purple a little bit. It was feeling a little bit hot. So when I just glaze over some orange on top of that, it chills everything out a little bit. But those colors still come through. And what happens is you as the viewer get to optically mix that stuff in your brain, right? But it's nice. It's just those like little spots of almost like rusty kind of stuff and 
textures that are going down all over that. And uh, once that's going, we better get on this figure, man. So I'm going to start reestablishing my drawing. I know I said earlier that I, I had to bury my drawing because I didn't want to fight it. Well, now I'm painting those lines in where I need them, right? That's a little bit different than the harsh black lines that were underneath there and were a lot less refined. And also, I'm doing a lot of this ink work in gradients, right? You can see how I'm adding transitions using dry brush techniques all over this thing to uh, to kind of build it up, right? Do a little bit of edge lighting coming from the stained glass window from behind, run that around the piece. And I started feeling okay once I started rendering up this area. Sometimes I feel like you need an anchor point. And if I just take a little bit of time on one area and push it a little bit further, I go, okay, I remember how to paint. And then I can continue on with the rest of the piece. But when the whole piece is mush the whole time, you're like, oh my God, I forgot how to paint. It's just mush. So yes, that, that, uh, that's a little mind trick I play with myself. Give me that little bit of polish, that little bit of finish, so then I can run with it. But you can see how sometimes what I do is I ink with that brush, and then I will run water over and smush out and blur some of my lines where I don't need them to be as harsh, right? I'm getting rid of that harshness again. I can do as much detail as I want in those similar value areas, as long as it's that similar value. So not a lot of super high contrast going on in some of these areas. So far, the plan is working. I'm just sticking with it, man. Now, in my course of my color study, I realized I could go much brighter with the brickwork that is behind the figure. So I'm pumping that building stuff up. And what it's going to do, of course, it's, it's, it's a matter of values, right? You got that shoulder, you got that sleeve with all that dark, you got that shoulder armor with all that dark in it. If I pump up the values and go higher with what's behind it, we get an excellent pop, right? It's popping that stuff out a little bit. Also stuck to those purples because that yellow being the complementary color on those light lavenders is going to pop out that edge lighting a little bit more. But I'm going to run it down the whole thing. And this is sort of just a controlled reapplying of gradients is sort of what you're seeing here, right? Every once in a while, I'll wash on a value like I did on the skirt a second ago to kind of like try to set the base middle value for something. The staff was going to be a lot of fun, but it's a lot of scumbling work that goes into it, right? Where I'm just kind of like finding some of those forms. I let them hang out for a little bit as I move on to other areas of the piece. Inking in the face and the hair now. Now, listen, I'm using a lighter color to this. This isn't like I'm inking it with black, right? Because I know I'm going to be having lighter values on the hair and on the face and a lot of the skin. So, as I said in the very beginning of the video, I don't want to fight heavy, heavy, dark lines, especially when you're doing a technique that has a lot of transparent washes going over it. Using that back shoulder pad to cut out the hair. I mean, it's all just... Is this thing lighter? Is this thing? Then this thing is darker. Is this thing darker? Then this thing is lighter. Like it's always like, is what in front darker? Then I go lighter than what with what's behind. And if what's in front is lighter, then I go darker with what's behind. And then there's the in between, which is where you get into the lost and found edges. However, you need to give us enough found edges that when you lose an edge, we're going to go along with the ride with you because you gave us a little bit of an anchor of silhouette. And you can see how I just went nuts and went ahead and just did a little glow around that staff already and lit it up a little bit. Directional cross hatching on that skirt. You can see my lines there are following the curve and the ellipse of the folds and that just builds in form, right? It's a way to just build in form pretty quickly. Made a mistake there, went too bright behind that little bit of skirt so I had to darken it again. But look, I am lightening the values behind that. And then I can go ahead and figure that light from the staff is going to kind of light up some of those symbols on the thing. But you can see I hit them very light first, but I knew they were going to be darker. And then when I glazed back over it, I could see it because yellow is such a transparent color that if I just tried to paint yellow on those little symbols, um, they would have been difficult to see on the darker value that was already there. All right. Establishing the face. We've saved this up to this moment. It's time to get in on it. Also, going back to the uh, beginning of the video, I had to change the goggles. In the, in the very early uh, color sketch you would have seen, they had different goggles on. She needed these slit goggles. But you can see I'm treating this as a gradient, right? I've got reference on the face. I am looking at reference for the face and as I do this, but I'm just trying to push those values around. Now, I played with the face a little bit. I left it. I'm going to go back to it in a second. Let's just let that sit and see how I feel about it in a moment. And I, and I feel like it's a good idea to jump around a piece like that sometimes, because otherwise you might take something too far, especially if you're working out of your head. You might take something all the way to black when you didn't actually need to. So give it a breath. Go work on something else. 
come back to it. And you can see me using the nooks and crannies and now going in and rendering up that face a little bit more. You can see on the shoulder pad area, I pushed the blacks a little bit further so that it would pop out some of that stuff a little bit more. Now I'm going in and working up the final highlights on the face. Jaya uh, is awesome, and I love that she's an older uh, planeswalker and that she just kicks so much ass, but it's super fun to paint gray hair. Now, look, there on the armor there, right? It's a warm and cool thing. I've got the warm light on the far side or the upper side of that armor plating, and then I went ahead and cooled off the highlights in the on the side that's closer to us, and that gives it that pop when you start pushing that warm and cool. There you go. That was the final rendered up on that thing on the face. So now we can just continue on and uh render 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 our butts off man it's time to just work up the hand a little bit work up that wrist a little bit i'm feeling pretty plucky about the whole piece though i'm digging it man i'm feeling like all right i got this thing under control let me get some more directional cross hatching in here on some of the ellipse remember those strokes are following the form following the curve and that makes that wrist have more volume essentially uh, all right, so we're just digging in with, uh, looks like just some minor details going on here. There's just, with outfits like this, which become pre-style guided, this is a pre-existing character. It's almost like painting Mickey Mouse for Disney or something. It's got to look a certain way, but unlike Mickey, this character has a ton of detail on the outfit. So I had to tell myself, all right, you know, just keep on going in, reference back to the detail, and uh, paint everything a little bit further. Going onto the ponytail, I thought it'd be cool to almost let it dissolve into almost silhouette. It's going to have a little more detail than that, I think. But uh, you can see how it goes from those warmer whites down to the tip where it got a little bit cooler and into the cooler uh, grays and, and purples. Now, what that does is it also balances out because those cooler colors on that ponytail balance out with the stuff that is behind her on the left scumbling out some of that warmth that was too harsh where my super dark went up to the very edge of the broken wall so just throwing it on there you can see there's the rough underpainting of the knee and here's a little bit of finality to it right it doesn't take a lot once that underpainting is there and the cool scumbly stuff is there and the textures are there a little rendering of highlights on top and you're good to go I'm kind of dreading these columns because I didn't know quite how I was going to do them so eventually I'm getting to the end of the piece I got to do them man so I created masses of texture I put down middle values in that texture. I'm going in with dark line at this point and I am inking all of those lines. And let me tell you, that was the pain drawing that Dominaria symbol in perspective like that on these columns, but it all worked out. So I was pretty happy with it. Um, but once I get those lines in there and they're established, then I can start cleaning up the silhouette of them a little bit more, glazing on a few more values to get a little bit more base volume in it. You can see I'm instantly finding out like, okay, what's the lit side and what's the shadow side? And all I'm doing is taking like a, a, a Payne's gray or a shading gray uh, acrylic and going in and kind of knocking in what would be the shadow side. Those columns are a little more forward to us. I'm going darker with those shadows, keeping it even tighter, more dark in those nooks and crannies as we get those symbols to pop. But remember, we don't want like crazy high contrast going on at the bottom of this piece. So I'm chilling it out a little bit as well because we want to be on that figure. And I just want you to imagine for a second that there was the, that those columns were super stark black and white. It would have been like really distracting for the figure. Plus, I knew we were going to be doing all this flame. You can see I'm holding like a few different cups of orange and yellow, and this is acrylic. So for flame work, man, you got to move pretty fast because it's going to dry pretty fast. So that's a lot of wet and wet, quick application into the orange, then dip it into the yellow, then dip it into the white and build it up. Spatter some paint on top of that. Once we got that up to fiery contrast, it was time to go ahead and light the hand a little bit more and run the reflected light or the edge light from that fiery hand onto the ponytail and onto the side of the head and the hair and the shoulder pads a little bit and just work that light around in a few spots. It goes a long way. A little goes a long way with that kind of stuff. A little bit of texture to the sort of braided br uh, rope, I guess, she has hanging off of her in areas. And there it is, folks. All right, we have found the final image. This is it, we did it. It's Jaya, and it was awesome to paint this, and I hope you all dig Dominaria United. It was fun to uh, visit this world again, and uh, I can't wait.
can't wait to see what everybody else is doing. All right. Until next time, I appreciate it. Spread the word, like, subscribe, all that stuff, man. And uh, you can always follow me on Instagram and all that stuff as well. And that's it until next time.